Hey, what's up guys? Uh, back at it. Nick White here, Tech and Coding on Twitch and YouTube. Please subscribe, check out my Patreon, please support me, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Doing all the eco problems, and we're on to another one. This one's called Island Perimeter, very similar to all the other island problems, if you've seen any of those. Uh, this time we're not going to be getting the area, we're not going to be getting the number of islands, we're going to be getting the perimeter of one island. Okay, so you're given a map in a two-dimensional integer grid where one is land, zero is water, same as the other ones, right? So we have a 2D array with a bunch of ones and zeros, right? One counts as land, zero counts as water. So if you look at this visualization down here, this brown is the land, the blue is the water. And that's how the ones are represented. See the shape right here of ones? That's all the brown right here. So... Uh, grid cells are connected horizontally and vertically, but not diagonally. So the land, I mean the, um, okay, that doesn't really matter that much in this problem anyway. The, uh, cause there's only one island, so it really doesn't matter. The, there's exactly one island. The island doesn't have lakes, so there's no water, uh, that isn't connected to the water of the island. Okay. One cell is a square with a length of side one, size 1. So we could visualize each cell, a 0 or a 1, as this would be a 0 cell, this would be a 1 cell. And they have sides, right? See, it has one a side with length 1. So this is a side with length 1, side with length 1, side with length 1, side with length 1. And individually, if this was just one cell, it would have a perimeter of 4. So let's see. Grid is rectangular, width and height doesn't exceed 100. Let's determine the perimeter. So how do we find the perimeter? I thought about this a little bit and it was a little confusing, but the, I mean, I you know, this is the way that we're gonna have to do it, right? It's pretty straightforward actually, once you think about it a little bit. You just go through, you loop through, do an O of M times N complexity, rows times columns to go through the 2D array, and which is pretty good. You can think of it as linear in number of elements, but you just loop through. So you're going to loop through each number like this. Boom, 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 right? Just traverse the uh, 2D array. So as we're traversing, when we see a land, we're going to do a check. So we'll say, okay, if, if it's a 1, so when we see a land, we're just going to assume the best case and add 4 to the perimeter. So we'll have this perimeter variable. We'll set it to 0 at first. And when we see a land, because let's say we only saw one land and it was right here. Well, that would just be four. We'd return that, right? So we're just going to add four every single time, right? Now, that's not going to give us the right answer. If we just added four to the perimeter every time, we'd get, well, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, uh, 28. So that's not the right answer. The answer is 16, right? The answer is 16 because the perimeter of an island is... In, in, in math, you should know this, the perimeter is just the outside, the, the outside of the object. So the outside of this object is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? And that is the answer. And we don't want to count these inner ones that connect. Those aren't on the outside, right? So if we added 4 every time, we'd get the wrong answer. It would be way too high because some of them connect. So here's how you do it. If they connect, if they connect, we're going to say, okay, let's add four, but if there's, a, if there's a neighbor to the left or above, meaning the previous row or the previous column, we're going to subtract two, and that is because of this. So we'll add four here, we'll add four here. Now we get here, and we see a neighbor above and to the left, but now we know that they are sharing, a, they are both sharing borders that will not be used. They're sharing... Um, a length of one that will not be used, each of them. So we subtract two each time that there's a neighbor to the left or above. So if there's a neighbor to the left, we add four initially for this object when we get to it for this one, and then we subtract, we see a neighbor to the left, so we subtract two because we're not using the left of this square and we're not using the right of this square anymore. And if we see one above, we're not using the bottom of this square and we're not using the top of this square. So we, okay, let's go through the whole example now. So we traverse, right? We're just traversing. We traverse here. We traverse here. We see a one, so we add four. Next, next, and the answer is four right now. Another four, no neighbor still, so that's eight is the answer. Then we see another one, that's 12 so far, but we do see two neighbors. Now that means we subtract two, we subtract two. So right back to eight. Now we add four again, and we're at 12 again, but we see a neighbor here, so we go about down to 10. Then we go down to here, 14, but we see a neighbor here, so we go to 12. We add 4 again here, no neighbors, so we're at 16, 
Then we had four here, two neighbors, minus two, minus two, and we get back to 16. It basically discounts it. If there's two neighbors, the whole perimeter is gone, basically. So there you go. That's the whole thing. That was the whole example. Let's code it out right now. It was pretty easy. Uh, you could do some boundary checks if you want to, like if grid dot length is equal to zero or grid of zero dot length is equal to zero we can return zero that's just protocol whatever check or whatever you can even do like if grid uh, is equal to null that's a good one too so whatever any of those uh, we'll have a variable for our result or perimeter or whatever you want to call it and then we just have to do our traversal right so i less than uh, grid dot length i plus plus and then that's the rows now we gotta go through the columns so we're gonna use j here j less than grid of i dot length j plus plus and here's the condition if grid of i of j if the current cell is land right then we're gonna to want to do all the rest of our calculations in here because this is what where we're gonna so initially first thing you're gonna to want to do assume the best case and add four so now four 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 every one we see we add four but we also need to do these conditions to remove two each time if there's neighbors. So if i is greater than zero, because we, do, we have to make sure we're in bounds, um, and grid of i minus one j is also land, well then we just subtract two. And this is a pretty easy problem. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this. I think it's pretty straightforward and way easier than the other island problems. But um, I could see where you could struggle with this if you're a beginner. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's up it. Sorry for the long explanation. I wanted to go through a little bit of an example and uh, solidify the... I keep saying solidify the understanding a lot now, but we're going to submit. Hopefully it goes well. There we go. 100% of solutions. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I thought I explained it pretty well, but maybe I didn't. Um, look up perimeter. It's the outside of an object. Everyone seems to like this problem. I think it's a good one, too. Very good beginner one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I do them all, so...